Okay, guys, I am starting now. Um, I'm just pulling up a couple of verses I'm going to need here for you guys. Um, so how are you? Just first off, how are you guys doing? Some reason it takes so long to like get the messages on live. I don't know why. Hi, Jack. Hi, Aureli. That's a beautiful name. Aureli. Or is, I wonder how you say that. I, I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Aureli. Uh, David, God bless you. Josh's. Hello. Osvaldo. Den Dennis. Dennis Rose. Love you, queen. Love you guys. Aw. It's, it's in French? Ooh, I love that. Hello, Shalom, Leah, Mark, Oscar, Daisy. God bless you guys. I'm so excited to be here. Lance, my husband's going to um, tune in in a second. But um, I'm so excited to be here with you guys because this is just something, you know, pornography and masturbation and lust is something that plagues all of us, right? So uh, the fact that God set me free, y'all, like I literally never thought God would I never thought I could be set free, right? And I'm sure a lot of you that maybe are dealing with the same thing, you just feel like, man, I don't know if God's ever going to set me free, right? But today we're going to talk about how God can supernaturally set you free from pornography, lust, and um, perversion, all of that stuff that comes through pornography. And we're going to talk about the spiritual consequences, right? Because a lot of people don't know the spiritual consequences. There's natural consequences like depression and like you know, shame and, and condemnation, things like that. But there are consequences that the Bible teaches us about um, that go really, really deep, really, really deep. And these are about revelations from the Lord that he gave me. So, um, so yes, let me, am I doing this right? Yes. Okay. Giorgio, howdy, howdy. I'm, you're always such a great support, jo Giorgio. I really love you so much. Uh, my husband and, and I very much appreciate you. You're very mm -hmm. encouraging. Uh, okay. Ham du lamb, vivo. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. So weird. I just got a notification from Insta, a spam porn thing. Next notification was this. Praise God. One thing that I've learned in getting rid of sins that I've stayed in a pattern for, the devil will give me dreams when I've stopped, right? Let's say it's um, let's say it's masturbation. Let's say it's smoking. I literally will get a dream, get multiple dreams of me doing it. The, God can speak through dreams, right? And I believe it's in Job where it says that that men go, they fall on their bed and they close their eyes to go to sleep, and God opens the ears of men during the time that they're asleep, and He seals their instruction, right? Um, so God can speak through dreams, but the devil can speak through dreams as well. Um, opens the ears of men. So this is my husband, everybody. Some of y'all know him. His name is Lance Van Tyne, um, and he is an author, uh, and he's also uh, a YouTuber as well, doing Christian uh, YouTube videos for the Lord. So, um, hey everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share this really, really quick, okay? And then we're going to get into it. But how God speaks through dreams, okay? Job 33, 16. When I found this, I was like, yo, this is so cool. The Bible is so cool. Okay, so Job 33, 16. And I'm actually going to start a little bit before. 14. Listen to this. For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while they slumber on their beds. Then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings that he may turn man aside from his deed and conceal pride from a man. He keeps back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. And we see that with Pilate, right? The, the, the guy who sentenced Jesus to death, the Roman. He, his wife had a dream about Jesus and said, Pilate, don't, don't kill this man. This man is innocent. 
there was a dream of warning. So do pay attention to dreams and pray for your dreams because the devil can use dreams and give you dreams of perversion and, and all the stuff and, you know, temptation, but God can too. So, uh, yes. So I am going to get into it. Um, you know what, before, before I start, cause I have a teaching on it that the Lord gave me these amazing revelations through scripture, the co spiritual consequences of pornography in your life, not just, you know, the regular consequences of depression and things like that. But before I uh, talk about those scriptures, I want to pass it over to my husband, Lance Van Tyne. Um, he is going to give you uh, his testimony on how God, y'all, delivered him from pornography uh, supernaturally. And how many years has it been, honey, since you've watched pornography and masturbated? Uh, it's been six years since I've been to a site. And then, or no, maybe seven years now. And then it's been six plus years since masturbating. So. Wow. Yeah. That, I mean, just incredible guys and incredible testimony of how God can set you free y'all. And then we're going to do, so I'm going to get into this. I just want to let you guys know what's going to happen here. So <laughs> my husband's going to give his testimony. I'm going to give a teaching on it. And then we're going to get into a Q&A and then we're going to pray for deliverance for anybody that wants deliverance because God can deliver you. Yes, he can. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, honey, please uh, let us know what happened. All right. Yeah. Do you want the soccer part to or just skip? All oh, that yes, line? please no. bring. Yes. Okay. The soccer part. Guys, all this right. is an amazing story. I'm done. All right. <laughs> this will be like your 10th time hearing it, but that's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, I uh, was born and raised in a Christian home, was very blessed. Uh, my mom had um, told the Lord, basically, I'm not going to tell him how to accept you. I just pray that you would impress upon his heart when he's ready. Um, and I'll just trust you in that, Lord. So at age six, I was hearing the story about Easter. And I said, Mom, how can I come to know this Jesus? And so she walked me through the sinner's prayer. And we obviously know it's not the sinner's prayer that saves us, but it's the heart in the prayer. And so after I finished up, I remember feeling something. And I was like, Mom, did you feel that? And she's like, what are you talking about, Lance? And I said, I feel like someone or something entered inside me. And it was the Holy Spirit. Uh, because we know once we truly believe in Christ and repent of our sins, we do receive the Holy Spirit, who is our advocate, our comforter, and our helper throughout this life. So long story short, that's a little bit of the background, but, um, you know, I had a neighborhood full of friends and we would hang out, play soccer and uh, video games and all of that, just play outside and have a bunch of fun. Well, one time I went over to a buddy's house. Uh, he was age uh, seven when I was nine. And he said, Lance, I have something to show you, but you can't tell anyone about it. And, you know, I grew up like my mom knew I had a very vivid imagination. So like even wasn't able to watch like PG movies at age nine, right? But that was my first introduction at nine at his house to pornography. And it's just important for any uh, type of parents out there or soon to be parents, um, really monitor what you're allowing your kids to see, what kind of technologies they have and who their friends are. Uh, because this was, you know, a, a fun family kid. No one would have suspected that what I was going to be introduced to would have been done by him. Um, but unfortunately it was. So definitely be monitoring and ask the Lord for discernment on that. And I don't want to go too, too long into this. So anyways, introduced at nine and I went through a series of stages. I went through a series of stages of not knowing what it was to then figuring out what it was to then enjoying it for a season and then having deep conviction set in. So, uh, around 16, um, you know, the Lord had just blessed me with being on certain soccer teams and it was going very well, excelling really well, was a starter on, uh, one of the top like 20 to 25 teams at that time in the nation for my age group, U16. So things were going well. It was fun. And so we were at a state cup semifinal game and I just played the worst game I, I played in forever, but we won six, nothing. And my coach says, Lance, this wasn't your game. We're going to need you for, for the full 90 come, uh, the state cup final game. And so I remember coming back and I had read somewhere that it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. And so this was during the time when I knew it was wrong. I, I was trying to get rid of it, but not really. And so I made a promise to God and I, I basically said, God, I pray that you would give me the best soccer game I've ever played in my life. And in exchange, I won't look at pornography for 21 days, thinking that that would leave. And then I said, now, obviously, we don't tell God anything. 
but just hear the heart and the prayer. I said, but if I do, God, I give you permission to severely damage or take away my soccer career for the rest of my life. Because I was serious about it. I wanted to get rid of it. It was a bad habit. Um, and just depression follows. You feel lethargic. You feel guilty and shameful and all of this. So we go to state cup finals. I played the best game of my life and things went well. Uh, and then it went to about the 20th day um, after that game. And I remember just having all these temptations all over the place and fighting. And then finally at 7.32 p.m., I ended up falling uh, and going to look at pornography. Well, I kind of forgot about the ultimatum. And so three months later, it's high school season now. I'm in, I'm in the fourth game of high school year. And uh, I end up going out there. And I had this really weird feeling like something bad was going to happen. And lo and behold, I, I weighed like 135 pounds at that time, I think, just a little stinker. Uh, but two guys, uh, like 175 pounds, came running full blast after I cleared a ball because I played left back uh, into my knee and it snapped. And this was the first of three knee surgeries um, where I tore my ACL and meniscus. Now, the unfortunate part was, is when I went through a year of therapy, it never fully healed. So I'd be sitting down for 10 minutes and then I'd have to spend about uh, a minute to a minute and a half working on straightening my leg all the way up to then being able to walk where I needed to go. So I was absolutely devastated. Um, and But the Lord taught me a bunch of stuff through that. So um, anyways, I was led to playing, um, uh, being on the team at uh, Calvin uh, in Grand Rapids. And um, unfortunately, my uh, my junior year, I think it was, uh, I tore my knee again, and then everything fully repaired. So God showed a lot of grace through that. But sophomore year, this is basically kind of where the ultimatum happened. So all of that kind of happened through my life. God was gracious, even though he took away um, my failure to fulfill my promise on the end. I reached a point where I was basically pursuing accountancy, which just seems very, it's not me. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but it wasn't going well. Um, I lost uh, certain scholarship things that I had earned. Uh, my buddy who was supposed to be my roommate, he wasn't able to come. So it was just me. Um, he was my best, best friend at the time. And, um, you know, just, I was having, you know, deep in pornography, suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, fear, fear, uh, pride, narcissism. I just was suffering. And I finally reached a point and I heard the Lord's voice very clearly. Um, basically the Lord said, Lance, I've been patient and long suffering with you. But now it's time to make a decision. Are you going to choose to follow me? Or are you going to continue to remain in pornography? And, um, you know, there's doctrinal things that we can unpack with that. Uh, can you lose your salvation? All that. I don't want to go all the way into that. But basically, I had just said, God, I want all of you or I don't want any of you at all. And from that day forward, that's when I say I was reborn. So I was born again at six and I was reborn at age um, I think it was 19 or 20. So, and then from there, the Lord really started changing a lot of things. So sorry, honey, I kind of... No, no, that's little, good. <laughs> no, that's fine. Did you want me to just unpack how the Lord brought freedom then and with the... Yes, yes. Well, of course, babe. We yeah. want to know, know. <laughs> know how... We want to know how you got set free. So, yeah. but but it's amazing. And I just want to say this. Isn't it amazing? He made a... He, he didn't make a deal, but like he said, he made a vow to God. And he said, God, if I break this 21 day fast from pornography, then take away my soccer career. And he literally, God literally did it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, and, and but it was in God's faithfulness because, you know, God corrects those, the, the father corrects those whom he loves, right? Like a father corrects his son whom he delights. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting correction from the Lord, uh -oh. Be wary. The Bible says it. You might not be a child of God. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, yes, please. He he got set free, guys. And this is just the best part of the story. So. Yeah. So, I mean, as you said, the Lord disciplines those whom he loves. And Ecclesiastes mm -hmm. says better not to vow than to vow and not pay. So mm -hmm. I am a living testament of that verse. And yes. therefore, uh, one of the many proofs that scripture is true. Right. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I. It wasn't until about, because uh, I'm 29 now, it wasn't until about age 22, I 
or 21, I can't remember when that was the last time uh, that I went on a website. Now, obviously, there are loopholes through other social media outlets that I had to deal with, and we will go into practical steps. I don't know if you want to do that, probably after your message, right? Well, I mean, I, we, we, we could talk about, yeah, after the message, because well, let's hear what, how God set you for you. Let, let's do that. Okay. Anyways, so going to the websites are gone. I'm now in the process of dealing with getting things out of my social media and all of that. Um, but I was still stuck in masturbation and I was doing it like pretty much every day, maybe multiple times a day. Um, even in opening up to some of the, um, some of my buddies and like, we all had the same thing. Like, man, every time we do that, we just feel so defeated. We feel just disgusted with ourselves and depressed and like, what do we have to live for? And it's true. It's, it's a terrible, terrible act. And that's why Jesus says it's better to cut off your hand than to enter into hell with your whole body. Uh, and that is in the section in reference to lust. It's not in reference to murder. Obviously, we know murder is wrong, but he also talks about eyes, so, the eyes. So anyways, I'm doing anything and everything to try and shake this on my own. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm reading certain things about how to break habits. I'm trying to set my parameters up in my life. And I still was doing it. And I would pray. I mean, I, I could refer back to my prayer journals. Uh, some of those pages have tears. I would cry many times because I just want to be delivered. And obviously the Lord brings freedom, right? But if I am recognizing this is a sin, this is how I would approach it. If I recognize it's a sin and I'm going to God in prayer and I'm not getting delivered or healed from this, what's going on? Does God not love me? Hmm. Does he not care? And God was leading me more into the reality of the spiritual components within scripture. Because everything we see in scripture there is both that which happens in our three-dimensional space-time continuum, but also in the spiritual realm as well. So I finally got to a point, I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. And this was like after two years, I think, one to two years. And finally, the Lord had just led me to a message by Derek Prince on demons and unclean spirits. So I listened to this 15-minute blurb and I said, you know, I've never really been taught this. I've always believed it. I know it's in scripture, so therefore it's true. Uh, but I want to, let's just see what this video is about. And I was listening and I felt confirmation in my spirit that this was of the Lord. So after that, I listened to the deliverance prayer by Derek Prince. So, um, you know, for when I began to listen to it, um, I just, I got my headphones in. I went to the basement. I think I was alone in my house during that time parents were working or something and I was back for break. I, I don't remember, but I, I decided, Lord, I don't even know if this is going to work, but I just, I just want to be set free. So I got my headphones, went downstairs, sat in the chair and I began to listen to the video and he begins walking through talking about first you need to be born again, obviously by believing Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior and repenting of our sins. After that, we need to make sure and double check our heart, make sure there's no unforgiveness because that can be a wall set up. Yes. Um, as Jackie says, I think multiple times in her videos, references to scripture, if we can't forgive someone else, then our father in heaven isn't going to forgive us. And that's severe. Yes, very serious. Uh, it's very serious. So basically, you know, went through that. I think in the time I had to forgive some people that maybe hurt me and gaslit me and did certain things. So I went through that. And then he said, you know, repeat this prayer. And then he basically said, now I'm going to pray for you. Now, this was just a video with like a picture on it. I was listening to his voice and he was at a conference doing certain deliverance. And uh, there's a lot of, just side note, there's a lot of false deliverances out there. It's all show. It's all theatrical. And so don't buy into them. Uh, we're very real and, and to the word and to what the scriptures have to say, not man-made produced uh, schemes that seem good on the surface, but actually have no profitability or power. So he starts going through the list, talking about anger, talking about pride. Then he goes and he says, finally, we get to the topic that no one ever wants to talk about. And that's sex. And mm -hmm. it's true. The church does not talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely dangerous because when the church doesn't talk about sex, then the world will educate people on sex. Mm. And this is the danger, and this is what we see. Biblical marriage is, is no longer highly esteemed. You know, the divorce rate, I think with the, even in Christian uh, churches, is over 50%. People really don't know what marriage is, what it entails, 
And the holy sacred act it is not only within the moment before people, but the oath and promise we're making to the person and before God. Hmm. And so that's a whole nother rabbit trail. <laughs> but he got to that point and he started preaching out against certain things. And then he finally said, uh, now I, I speak against any demons of masturbation in the name of Jesus come out. And I remember during that point, I remember I'm sitting there. I want to be delivered. I'm very depressed. And this presence began to come over me and began to scoff at the video. And then eventually I felt this presence lift from me and I had a burning sensation in my left hand. Well, after that, uh, I went to work out with my buddy. Uh, and then I said, man, my hands just burning. He's like, Lance, what are you talking about? Let's just hit this workout. And so since that day, I have not, nor have I had the desire to masturbate. And this opened up my eyes to say a lot of problems. Yes, there are neurochemical chemicals that might be uh, messed up. Yes, there might be environmental issues. Yes, there might be problems with the family and how they treated you and all that. But if something is enslaving you in a mindset, in word, or in action, you recognize it's sin and you want to get away from it, you're praying to God and it seems like he's not answering you most likely need to be delivered from an unclean spirit. 100%. And so deliverance is very much a gift, and I'm going to hand it over to Jackie, but deliverance we should not be afraid of at all because what's more scary? Uh, getting delivered and having it be maybe a little awkward or a little weird because we don't understand it for a few moments, or is it more scary in keeping those demons within us? That's a question that's posed to you, and you have to answer that for yourself. Yes. Yes, that was really good, babe. And it's just amazing. It's amazing. I'm so blessed that God delivered my husband from pornography. So I would never have to because I've been hurt in relationships before um, where men would, uh, you know, watch pornography and not have sex with me. And it was really, really hurtful to me because I felt rejected. And a lot of women, you know, maybe there's some of you here that you felt rejected by your husband because of this issue. And it really does damage uh, marriage, you know, and there's a lot of men, right? They want marriage. They they're seeking their wife. They're like, God, where's my wife? But they're not taking the steps that they need to take in order to prepare for that wife to be the man of God she needs and to be set free from pornography because pornography is cheating on your wife. And we're going to look at scripture right now. And before I go there, no, actually, you know what? We're going to go straight there. So, um, and while you're looking it up on someone saying, is this watchable later? Oh yes. Uh, it'll be up later. Yeah, absolutely. You can watch it later for sure. I'm not going to delete it. Um, cause this is a definitely a very important teaching. So we're going to go, if you have your Bible, cause you should have your Bible cause y'all know it's the sword of the spirit boo and you need to have it because we're in a spiritual war at all times. So Matthew 5, 28. Okay. But I say unto you that whoever looks on a woman with lust, to lust after her, has committed adultery with her in his heart. So God is saying, basically, when you're looking at a woman with lust, whether that's pornography, whether that's in person, you are. Ba it's basically the same. If you're lusting after her, it is basically the same thing as if you actually committed the act with her. You are literally having sex with her. You've done it in your heart already. So what happens, you know, is when you're looking at pornography, uh, look at what this says. This is crazy, guys. 1 Corinthians 6.16 says, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two shall become one flesh. So when you're committing adultery with a prostitute, you become one with her, one flesh. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, it's not it, it, it's not just the, the physical sense, right? Because we're not just physical beings. So you're, you're becoming one with this prostitute. And you're becoming one with her physically and spiritually. And there is 
if she has the spirit of suicide, depression, homosexuality, addiction, perversion, anger, whatever it is, it could be transferred into you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you, if just looking at a woman with lust is committing adultery with her already in your heart, committing adultery is becoming one with that person. So when you're looking at these porn stars, what happens? These porn stars are addicted to drugs. These porn stars are depressed. These porn stars are suicidal. And you are becoming one with these people. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are creating what's called a soul tie, which is very biblical. There's good soul ties, right? I have one with my husband, a godly soul tie. And there's bad soul ties, right? So you don't want an ungodly soul tie with, and, and, and maybe you need to spend time with the Lord in prayer. I had to do this because I had sexual partners before my husband. He is a virgin. He married me a virgin. But, um, you know, he didn't judge me off of that, right? He didn't judge me off of that because God set me free and cleansed me and I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus, right? And so I had to be in prayer and be like, God, I break because there's power of life and death in the tongue, right? We can make verbal contracts even here on earth. There's a legal system. We can make a verbal contract, right? And it's legal. I break every every uh, soul tie I made with, and I name the names, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood. There's power in the name to cut off those soul ties. You wonder why you keep going back to that girl, why you keep going back to that guy. It's because you've created a soul tie with that person, right? And it could be emotionally. It could be sexual. Right. But men, a lot of times they are so sex drives them so much that they can be fooled into marrying a woman simply because of the sex. And he can he can be miss, you know, just bypassing all these red flags because she's a beautiful girl, because she's got a big butt because she's got big boobs, because of this, 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 and the other thing, right? My husband and I, when we met, he did not kiss me for the five, first five weeks. We didn't have sex until marriage, but he did not kiss me for the first five weeks. And I was like, what's going on? Hello, do you not love me? Do you not, do you not think I'm cute? Like what's going on? You know, you know, us girls were like, you know, what's going on? I don't want to feel rejected. So, but he explained to me later, he's like, I didn't want emotion to get in the way of me really discerning if we are a good fit for each other. And that is a wise man right there. That is a wise man right there, y'all. So, um, women, and yes, and, and I just saw somebody, Rick, women need to quit using it for advantage. Absolutely. Hmm. Women use that as a weapon. And unfortunately, the roles have been reversed in this society, right? Men are acting like women. Women are acting like men. Men don't pursue women anymore. Men just sit back and wait because the women, they're used to it now. They're so spoiled by it. Women just come up because they act like men. Women are the ones going around and having sex with a bunch of partners, right? It's very backwards in this world right now. Um, but sexual sin is a sin against your own body. So it is in a different, in the Bible, y'all, sexual sin is in a different category than the rest of the sins. Okay. Um, so listen to this. 1 Corinthians 6.18. Flee from sexual immorality. Flee from it. Run from it. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Y'all, God is saying there. this is in a different category. This is serious, guys. Mm -hmm. What happens with pornography too is you open a lot of different doors to the enemy. I mean, the, the enemy can only come and, and pervert your mind and give you depression, give you all anxiety and all these things because you give, you have given him a right. You've get, he, he works in a legal basis, right? You get, you've given him a legal access and right, an open door through pornography to come and torment you. And the thing is with pornography, there's so many holes you can go down 
there's bondage, there's per, all kinds of perversion, incest. Okay. And it's like a drug, right? Because you, you go here and you know, you're satisfied with this, but then you, you're not satisfied with that anymore. You got to go here and to a higher level and get more intense and intense and intense. And this is the thing with, with, with men. And I'm going to say this when you are men, if you are watching, this is something the Lord revealed to me. If you are watching pornography and you think that just because you're watching a girl, a, a woman and a man does not mean that you're watching the man, you are watching the man and a spirit of homosexuality can come through that. And a lot of men deal with this spirit of bisexuality and homosexuality and it comes through pornography because even some of those guys that you're watching are gay themselves or bisexual themselves this is this is this is real stuff guys it is very dangerous to be watching pornography and even i've talked to atheists right and atheists are like i'm like hey you know you don't believe in god you don't you believe we'll cease to exist we're just animals right okay when you watch porn, how do you feel? Uh, man, I mean, I feel disgusting. I feel like, man, I don't want to push push that laptop away from me. Why? Because God has given us a moral law within our hearts written there when we're born. We know it's wrong to lie. We know it's wrong to steal. We know it's wrong to uh, murder. We know it's wrong to watch pornography. We were not created, y'all to be watching people on a screen. We were created by God. Sex is a gift. Sex is a gift. Take it from somebody who's been raped three times by two different men in my relationships that I was dating. Take it from somebody who was sexually abused as a child. I was. Take it from somebody who had sex outside of marriage. I never enjoyed sex. I did it, and a lot of women do this, for the emotional part and to feel wanted. Hmm. Men do it for the sexual, physical part mostly. And some women do for the physical part as well. But there's a lot of women, I've talked to them, they do it for the emotional part. And I never enjoyed sex until my husband because it's blessed. It's a different kind of sex, guys. It's different. It's blessed by the Lord. And you get to grow and be with that person and learn each other's bodies and learn. And it's a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing because we connected emotionally. We wait until marriage. Look at the beauty in this. We connected emotionally, mentally, intellectually, spiritually, and then physically. <sighs> The physically, when, when it's connected, that's it. Like, it's amazing because you already connect in all these different ways. But to have sex with somebody you don't even know, give your body away, right? So, and God tells us, do not have sex outside of marriage. Why? To protect us from heartbreak. Yep. Do you know how much heartbreak I've endured? I know some of you men have endured some heartbreak. And I want to tell you, God did not intend for you to go through that. God did not want you to go through that. God did not want you to be manipulated by a woman and have all your money sucked from you from this woman and your emotions messed with. And you were, and the reason why is because you were stuck on physical. Because men are physical creatures and they are visual creatures. Well, I mean, we're all physical creatures, but visual creatures. But beauty is vain. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised because a woman who fears the Lord, honey, she's going to love you. She's going to love you. She's because she loves God. She knows God and God is love. And if you know God, you know love. That's right. And when she does something wrong against you, honey, you don't have to come and tell her the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I say something and, and maybe I'm moody or whatever. And I'm like, you know, da, 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 da. And then I'll walk away and then the Lord will be like, Jackie, you should not speak to your husband that way. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord, you're totally Doesn't right. Absolutely. And I come back and I'm like, hey, Lance, I just want to say I'm so sorry for, for doing that. You want a woman of God. If some of y'all men are entertaining women that are not of God, 
Honey, you are mi the longer you entertain the wrong thing, the longer it's going to take for the right thing to come into your life, boo. God's not bringing that woman to your life because you were still entertaining the wrong thing. It's true. Um, honey, did you want to, did you want to touch on, I have a few more things, but did you want to touch on a little bit of like how men can be so blinded by the physical that they'll bypass all these red <laughs> flags and no, actually, before you even go there, can you talk about how men look at women as objects because of sex or because of because porn? Of pornography, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unfortunately, when I was introduced to pornography at age nine, that did uh, make me objectify women. Uh, the first glance wouldn't be the face. It'd be, you know, below the belt. And then I'd look up. Um, and I just had a problem with that. Uh, and the reason is, is because as Jackie said, pornography does objectify women. And the more you watch pornography, the more, not only do you build sort of an emotional connection, if you're watching the same person over time, but you have to really sit there and you have to tell yourself, I am forming a relationship that is a one-sided relationship, not only first and foremost in an ungodly way, God doesn't want us viewing pornography, but also this person doesn't care about me. This person mm -hmm. doesn't even know me. Mm -hmm. And yet this person is controlling me. Pornography is extremely dangerous because it leads you into not only one relationship, maybe you're attracted to one person, but many. And now your mind is unable to really be present with an actual physical person because the dopamine release that you're getting from pornography is being all for that pleasure. Obviously, um, if you're scrolling for pornography, you can watch whatever you want, many things you want. It's, it's pretty much unlimited. And as that happens, you just lose touch with reality. And what you need to begin to see is that the person you're watching, uh, as Jackie had said, they are on drugs. Um, you know, they are not happy. Uh, there might be a select few, but they're, they're suffering with depression. Uh, these women are being put into certain scenes and scenarios that they don't want to do, but they're doing it for money. Um, you know, even imagine some of the these these women that you're watching are going out in public and men are seeing them. They don't see this as a human being created by God. They don't see this person mm. as someone who has goals and interests and hobbies and came from parents. And, you know, this is an actual person. And so what what's the the problem is with pornography, there's so many problems, but it's definitely the objectification because you lose touch with reality. And then you start, it changes your pursuits too. When you begin to go after females and, you know, women that you're attracted to and whatnot, the end goal in your mind, if you are a porn addict, really is not, I want to find someone that I can marry and settle down with. First and foremost, you need to nip pornography right in the bud. Because if you don't nip that in the bud, you're going to be bringing it into your uh, relationship. If if you continue to date this person, marry them, you're going to bring it into your marriage. And this is going to be extremely dangerous and ultimately damning for mm. everything. So when the more you watch pornography, it actually hinders a proper pursuit for a female. Because your main mission and goal now is, as men, we like the hunt, right? We're hunters. Mm. And once you acquire what you want and you're coming in with bad motives and you're coming in just for the sex, you're coming in just to be able to taste, touch, and feel, then you say to yourself, in the same way you look at pornography, well, I've tried it. I've looked at it. I've been able to see an experience. See ya. On to the next one. And mm. you're unable to not only meditate and reflect on what you're doing for yourself, the damage to yourself, because you're hindering your future and what God wants to do in you, but you're also creating a ripple effect that is going to affect that person and the lives of other people for decades to come. Because you now are part of someone's hurt and trauma. You now are someone who has either taken the virginity of someone, or you are an extra number compounded 
to that person's life if they've fallen before. And that's another extra person that not only that person has to tell their future spouse if they're truthful, but they themselves, if they actually get married, have to say, yeah, uh, I love you, hon. Um, and then, you know, if they're honest, they'll say, but I've slept with, you know, 40 girls or something like that. And right. And in the soccer world, like, you know, guys have discussions and all that. And as a virgin, you know, I was made fun of at certain points. And then other people would congratulate and say, man, that's really honorable. And um, because I wanted to save that for my now wife, Jackie Vantine. Right. But, you know, I would hear conversations about guys bragging, oh, I've slept with 30 women or I've, I've slept with 60 and I've even heard triple digits. And it's like at the end of the day, when you reach the end of your life, it really is, it's a childish behavior. And is that really something you're going to want to brag about and carry on? Is this something that your future wife is going to say, oh, wow, you did. Congratulations. Good job. No, it's going to be extremely hurtful to her. Now, I've also met with people that have said, yeah, I've slept with one or two person, but when I meet the one, I'm not going to tell them. That's not good either. Mm. So it takes, first and foremost, you have to seek God for the power to be able to get this out of your life. And we'll talk about practical steps soon. Um, but it's just important to know there are many damaging effects to pornography, not just the objectification of women but also you're damaging certain neurological pathways within the brain. Uh, you're not able to think as clearly. Obviously, it's a hindrance to your confidence level. No person walks away from pornography saying, man, I feel really confident about myself because it's something that's done in private. Mm. And Satan wants to keep you there by whispering in your ear, just as he did to me until I finally opened up to people. I think around age, it might have been... 21, I believe. Um, but he wants to whisper in your ear, you're the only one who struggles with this. There, There's something mm -hmm. wrong with you. If you go and tell this, people are going to look at you different. People are going to judge you. And you know what? If, if people are going to judge, let that be the case. We're going to go to God first and foremost, and God is waiting with open arms. He knows what we have done wrong. He desires to save us from all of our sins. If Hitler would have genuinely, genuinely repented on his deathbed, God would have saved him. Now we say, that's crazy to think. That's not fair. That doesn't make any sense. Mm. God's grace and his love don't make sense. But it, there is a call and a responsibility on our, on our end to say, God, I am in the wrong. I do know that I am a sinner and Christ is my only hope to being saved. And you sent him to die on a cross for my sins. I believe that, God. Mm. Come into my life. Change me. It's a little bit of a rabbit trail, yes. but. <laughs> no, that's good, babe. That's good. And yes, absolutely. I think it changes your mind when you watch porn as a man and as a woman. Okay. And I'm going to get into the woman part in a second. Okay. Uh, because I know some of you were were talking about that because it's it's very, it's like a women don't talk about this. Men talk about it, but women don't talk about this. It's very common amongst women to watch pornography. But, um, you know, for a man, let's just say for a man, because he's very visual, visual creature. You're watching pornography, right? And you're desensitized to a woman's anatomy. When you see your wife coming out of the bathroom, freshly showered, guess what? You're not going to think anything of it. Mm. you're desensitized to it. But a man who, his eyes are only for his wife, it's like, wow. And it will affect your sex life in your marriage. Pornography will affect your sex life in your marriage. And God's, and, and if looking at a woman with lust is, and is committing adultery with her in your heart, how is it that God, if you are not faithful to God, okay, if you are not faithful to your wife right now watching pornography, okay, and this comes from two people that have watched pornography and been set free from, I'm not, I'm not judging anybody. But if you are, you know, saying, God, I really want a husband, I really want a wife, but you're watching pornography, God is saying, you can't even be faithful right now. What's to say when you get married, you're going to be faithful. A lot of men are like, oh, yeah. well, you know, let me get married and then the lust problem will be gone. 
honey, no. You're going to be watching porn in your marriage and you're actually going to prefer porn over your sex life with your mar- with your wife and vice versa for women. Can I just say briefly, yeah. and this is true because I know multiple pastors who have opened up to me and this is in their marriage. This isn't something that was dealt with. That's crazy. That's crazy, guys. But this is the thing is that God can deliver you. And that is why we're here. We're going to talk about it. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. So uh, when I was around 13, I was introduced to it by a friend that came over, you know, whatever. And um, unfortunately, it was just since that time on, you know, and I would try to stop. Right. And, uh, you know, the month would come around and, you know, monthly period and then I would fall again, whatever. And I felt like I would never get out of this. I begged God. I said, God, why? You know, I I tried so hard to stop on my own. I tried with prayer. I tried with reading. I tried with all of the spiritual weapons. But what I didn't realize is that I needed deliverance. I needed deliverance is the children's bread. That's what Jesus said. It's the children's bread. It is for believers. Right? Because unbelievers don't want to be set free. So anyways, um, God showed me a practical way. And this is just, we're going to get into a little a bit, a little bit of practical ways, right? And then we're going to get into Q&A. So practical ways that you can overcome this, okay? God gave me this analogy, and I'm sure some of you have seen my, my video, How to Overcome Lust. God showed me that when you are bored or whatever, the devil will come to you and say, hey, you know, watch pornography. And it'll be the thought to watch pornography will come like this, like a snake. That's the thought to watch pornography, right? And the thought will be, and then if you, and it's a far off, you kind of feel it like a far off. Maybe you're just watching TV or something. You feel that kind of a far off, right? If you entertain that, it's going to come into your ear. It's going to remind you of all those sounds and all those pictures and videos that you saw in pornography. It's going to slither in your ear. You're still entertaining it. It's going to come into your ear, come into your brain, wrap around your brain, and it's going to constrict. And at that point, it's got control over your body. You're Mm. done. That's why the Bible says flee from sexual immorality. It doesn't say endure the temptation. No, 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 no. Mm. This is very different. Joseph right? Joseph, when he was before, when he was working for Potiphar as a slave in the Bible, Genesis, uh, and Potiphar's wife came to him and said, hey, sleep with me. He said, no, that's wrong. And he fled from her presence, right? So I'm going to show you guys. Um, oh, can you open that baby? Yeah, I got you. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little picture, right? Yeah. Of this is from my video, but this is this is what happens, right? So you're right here and the the, the thoughts are far off, right? And then it, if you entertain, it comes into your brain and it, it slithers in your ear, right? This thought to watch pornography. And then it gets in your brain, wraps around your brain and constricts. Now, this is what you need to do. The You need to use the word of God. You need to quote scripture because it is the sword of the spirit. That's what the Bible says. It's the sword of the spirit. You are fighting against an unseen enemy, he's invisible, and you can't use a physical sword and a physical knife to fight the devil, okay, and his temptations. So what do you need? You need the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. And when Jesus was in the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, being tempted by the devil, what happened? What did he say? He said, he quoted scripture, the the devil would come. Oh, turn this thing into bread. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He would say it every time, it is written, it is written, it is written. He would cut the snake at the head. So that is what you need to do when you get this thought to watch pornography. And it works for any thought. Suicidal thought, depression thought, thought to yell at your husband, thought to whatever. You say, the Bible says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. That is scripture. So right here, when you're getting the thought afar off to watch pornography, you say, I take that thought captive in Jesus name. God taught me to do that. When it's a far off, not when it's here, when it's here. And God taught me to do that. And you know what? Set free. I went through deliverance, 
set free from pornography and masturbation. Now, um, some practical things I would say, okay? Close the open doors. Yeah. Men, are you serious about this? Are you serious about getting rid of pornography? Women, are you serious about getting rid of pornography? Are you serious about getting rid of lust in your life? Go on Instagram right now. Go on Instagram right now and either delete it on Facebook, everything, or unfollow all of those bikini girls and, and workout girls and all that stuff. Unfollow it. Unfo close the doors. Get rid of that music that's talking about booty and this and that. Mm, that ain't helping. <laughs> that is not helping. I promise you. That being pumped into your head. Oh, yeah. She's just, she's an object. You will not be able to see and appreciate your wife with pornography in your life. It's impossible. And vice versa for a woman, right? You will not be able to appreciate your husband with pornography in your life. Impossible. Because you're going to want the pornography over your husband, right? So um, those are some practical things, honey. Is there any other practical things that you wanted to add in there? Yeah, I was just looking through the comments. Um, so, like, what helped me, and those are great tips, hon. Yeah. Basically, uh, St Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, discusses just start, one of the things is start with the end in mind. And so, basically, what you want to do, and what really helped me, is getting the fear of God in you. So, just understanding that everything you do and everything you say whether done in private or public, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ says, whether it's done in darkness or in light, will be brought into the light. Ecclesiastes 12, the last, uh, uh, the second to last verse, um, discusses how everything done, whether good or evil, will be brought, um, and we'll have to give an account. Uh, it will be brought before him to whom we have to give an account. So knowing that Everything you're doing, all those times you've done with pornography, uh, it's going to be brought forth and you will have to give an account for that, instills the fear of God into you. Um, because we obviously, when we're doing it, we don't want you know our spouse to look. We don't want our brother or sister to look. We don't want our family coming in or friends noticing or whatever it might be. Uh, when you're caught up in that, you don't want anyone to know. And the reality is, is people will come uh, to know on that final day when everything is truly exposed. So get the fear of God in you. And it's a healthy fear. It's a reverence for God. But it's also like, man, I really need to take this serious because even though I'm hiding it in this life, it's not going to be hidden in the next. Because we all have to go through the to the great white throne. Uh, well, we all have to be judged, obviously, whether we're going to be sent to the lake of fire or into heaven. And then there's a second judgment, which is where believers do give an account with how they stewarded the gifts of God, their time, and how they lived uh, for Christ. So we as believers have two judgments. Unbelievers only have one. Um, so I would say that number two is, um, as you had mentioned, you know, social medias and all that. Uh, I read a comment. I think someone said, just say you're not interested in certain things. That most certainly does help. Uh, I set up certain parameters for what it's called now X, but it was Twitter um, beforehand, uh, still Twitter, just different name with Elon Musk. And then in Instagram, setting it up where I have like parental control on it and saying, I don't want to see content that may be uh, inappropriate. So I set that up. Uh, obviously, unfollowing certain people, as Jackie had mentioned, on Instagram. But guys or women, you need to understand what what am I about? Truly, where do I want to go in life? What has God gifted me in? Where does he want to bring me? Where does he want to take me? Because if we don't have a purpose to drive forward toward, if we don't have a long-term vision and we're, we're, we're taking one step at a time to get there, What's the automation of mankind? It's to fall back on distraction. And if your habitual state is pornography for your distraction, then you're automatically going to go there. But if you're keeping yourself busy, right? Do you have goals at the gym to work out and lift? Do you have certain goals of starting up a business? 
you need to win the day by setting up your day before the day happens. So, for example, uh, tomorrow, work on kind of structuring out, okay, in the morning, you know, maybe you want to start working on writing a book or something. You take an hour out of the day, get the quotes that you want, right? Or maybe just plan out what, what's it going to look like? What's going to be the title, the subtitle, and then what are the chapters going to be? And basically what you need to do is get big goals and then break them down into small goals and then make sure your days are preoccupied because the times where pornography got me the most was when I was bored mm. and I had nothing to do or on the schedule because my fallback was, well, I have nothing to do. This does feel good. So I'm going to go watch that for a while. And the results were just uh, devastating afterwards. So those are a few key things. And, you know, do things also each day that will give you a sort of dopamine release. Mm. So I don't know what that is for you. Um, you know, again, it could be gym related things. It could be hobbies. It could be sports. It could be spending time with friends. It could be reading a book, whatever it might be. But do those things because the more your brain continues to feed off the dopamine of that particular thing, other things are going to begin to dwindle away. There's something called neuroplasticity, and that's when your brain can form new neurological pathways. So however we're made, we're not. it's not like we're pre-programmed for everything. We actually can change the wirings within our brain from neuroplasticity. The process is neuroplasticity where the brain forms new neurological pathways. How do you make uh, a neurological pathway begin to fade and then ultimately uh, sort of vanish? Obviously, we know uh, prayer and fasting, God can help with certain things, of course. Deliverance, which we'll do in just a moment, because I know I'm talking a lot and I need to wrap No, it's up okay, here. baby, go. <laughs> we'll I'm do just that. No, please, yeah, please uh, do that. So for a neurological pathway to be weakened, how, how do you make it go away? It's to not have it activated or used. So when you refrain from going to pornography each day, and you know, the first three days are terrible. First week is difficult. But the more you continue to stop that, those pathways become weakened. And then over time, you need to not just try and not do it, but fill that time with something else. And as you're filling it with something you enjoy doing, those neurological pathways will begin to be formed and then strengthened. And over time, as you don't return to the pornography and you're continuing to do these things that make you happy, that are appropriate and maybe even productive or just enjoyable for you, how the brain works is eventually after a certain amount of time, it will begin to say, uh, I'm not really using this anymore. I guess I don't need it. And it, it fades out. Now, obviously, depending upon how long you've been in pornography and all of the, these things, there's a big healing process involved that God has to then also take over with, uh, clearly, because you might have a lot of in images stored up in your head that God needs to set you free from. Um, but know that this is most certainly possible, and it, it's good to just fill those voids with things that you um, enjoy doing. Uh, if there's anything else... Um, I don't think, uh, there was one other thing, hon, but it slipped my mind. So, oh, no problem. If it comes to mind, I can share it. Yes. But I think those are some good starting points. Yes, right absolutely. Now. Well, um, guys, so now is the time for Q and A. So please, please guys put in your, your questions. We know that there's a lot of questions. There was somebody that said, what is deliverance? So throughout the Bible, Jesus, you know, his main two things that he did, one of the main two things besides preaching, you know, um, and teaching was uh, deliverance of demons, unclean spirits from people and uh, healing. He would lay hands on the sick and heal them, uh, the blind, etc. cetera. Uh, so those were two things that um, were a huge part of his ministry. And he said in the Great Commission to all of us. He said, go out, preach the gospel to every living creature, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Okay. When you have the Holy Spirit, you have the authority. He gives it to you to cast out demons out of people. Okay. Now, uh, I've always said this, a Christian born again, having the Holy Spirit living in them cannot be possessed by a demon because they are possessed by the Holy Spirit. However, they can be 
oppressed by a demon. And what that really means is, is that um, it's like, it's hard to explain, but basically it's like the, the demon is in, in your flesh kind of thing. You open the door through pornography or whatever it was, and the demon is in your flesh. Okay, not in your spirit, not in your soul, but in your flesh. And it's uh, driving your flesh to keep doing the same sin. That's the best way I can put it. I'm sure Jesus would say, well, it's this, 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 because it's more deep than we can understand. But um, deliverance is for the people of God. Why? Because unbelievers do not want to get delivered. They want to continue in their sin. Deliverance is the children's bread, as Jesus said. It's the children's bread. So um, uh, it is something that has delivered me from cigarette addiction for a long time and vaping. Um, it was the only thing. I took medication for years. Nothing worked. It was the only, the only thing was deliverance. So that is what deliverance is. Um, I'm looking, are cold showers good for dopamine? Yes, it very much so. Yes, it's hard, but it's very good. Honey, did you have um, something? Well, yes. Oh, with cold showers too, it does put you like, it is good, but also just monitor it because it does put you in the same state as if you were highly stressed. So mm. just kind of monitor that. Um, there's recent science and talks on that uh, lately. But I just had it in my mind of what the other thing was. And now it's you forgot my mind again. again. Yeah, I had it just now. Um, oh, well, I mean, obviously scripture, right? So do not be conformed to the image of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I believe that's in Romans. And so the renewing of our mind, obviously the Holy Spirit has to be in us to help us. But the renewing of our mind is when we're staying in scripture. Yes. Now you need to make sure that when you do this, because I mean, for myself, my wife knows if I don't have it like structured in, it's very difficult for me to stay disciplined with that. I have to get that in. Um, so pick a time throughout the day, whenever works best for you. Maybe it's right when you wake up, maybe you're a morning person. Uh, Jackie knows it takes me like 15, 20 minutes to get going and waking yes. up. Uh, maybe it's at night, uh, maybe it's right after lunch, but have a set time where you say, you know what, I'm going to spend time in the word and just before you even do it, figure out exactly where you want to go. Cause otherwise you open, you have the Bible and you're like, well, where do I start? Where do I begin? What should I do? Figure out what chapter you want to do and then have a certain amount of time and have it be after a certain activity. So after lunch, I'm going to read the Bible for 15 minutes or something mm -hmm. like that. And as you're doing that, the more you read the word, the more the word is getting inside you and the Holy Spirit acts upon the word. Obviously, he can do things on his own, but we do also have a will. When we're sinning, we're grieving or quenching the spirit. But when we're reading the word and spending time with him, the Holy Spirit flows more uh, fully through us because our will is operating on the basis of the things of God. Yes. That is really good, babe. Very good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and also, you know, when I wake up, I have my little Bible. So cute, so tiny, so cute. But I have it right by me and I have my phone somewhere else really far away charging. So the first thing that mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I can't, the first, if my phone was near me, honey, you know that I'd be checking my phone first, right? <laughs> checking my email, checking my this right here. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, somebody said, um, where can we get your book? John said, where can we get your book? I have been talking about this guys. I just, I'm not a reader at all, but Lance, since I married him, we went through his book, the way of the cross, which gives you a practical way of how to lay down your life. You know, Jesus says, take up your cross, follow me daily. Anyone who wants to follow me, they have to deny themselves, take up their cross, follow me daily. And um, <clears throat> he takes us through the stages of what it looks like to crucify, like crucify your flesh and literally live for Jesus and what people are going to, you know, think of you and how people are going to react to you and, you know, all the stages that you're going to go through and pra with practical everyday ex examples. And it's so amazing. Um, and just really short chapters, which... I always tell him I love because I can't with the long chapters. I studied ministry. I can't. Uh, so uh, The Way of the Cross is his book. He has a few other books there. Um, uh, God's Attributes. Uh, what, what is it called, baby? 
uh, three other books on Amazon, Ineffable Attributes, Understanding the Inconceivable Characteristics of God, that has 31 attributes, so you can do an attribute a day for a month. There's also uh, Unra Unraveling Deception, Discerning Darkness, which really is helping you have the discernment and exposing and understanding that not everyone who claims Christ possesses Christ. Mm, it's true. Uh, there's a difference between self-proclaimed Christians and true born-again believers. And Correct. so it, there's a lot on that, a lot on false prophets, false doctrines. And then the one that actually was just published um, just very recently is called uh, The Unknown Known. Uh, from God's simplicity to His infinity, which basically is, un is unpacking how God is very is simple in form, because John four twenty four says God is spirit. Obviously, He's not made up of parts, right? Obviously, the Logos revealed Himself through Christ in this life, but overall, there's still the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, God is spirit. So God is simple in form, complex in being, right? Because there are three persons: the Father, the Son, who's the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and the Holy Spirit. And then God is infinite in attributes. So when we speak about his power, he's infinite in power. So whatever amount of power he uses, he never extracts any amount of mm -hmm. power technically because there's an infinite supply. And whatever is infinite cannot reach a peak. And technically on an infinite scale, nothing, the higher you go, you're always at the starting point. So it's unpacking that. And we look at his attributes there on uh, his infinitude, transcendence, and eternality. Yes. So that one is filled with a bunch of revelation that is just mind blowing. Um, but his, the one that recently I've been posting. Um, so if you go to my last video, you'll see it in the description, the way of the cross, and then you'll see the little link for Amazon. So that's where you can find it, John. Uh, super cool. And I totally recommend it for everybody. Um, it just shows what it really means to follow Jesus in a world where there's just so many false gospels, you know? So, uh, Lucas, you said lust after your own wife or husband is a sin. No, because you're not lusting. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you have a husband and a wife, you know, well, I have a husband, he has a wife, right? Mm -hmm. But when you have a husband or a wife, you are not lusting after them because it's not lust anymore. There's no shame in it. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, so yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. But you can think sexually about your husband or your wife as much as you'd like. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. Just keeping it real. Um, okay. Uh, Wilson Pineda Gonzalez. Como nombre puede saber con certeza que ya fue liberado de la pornografía. How do you know, how does a man know for sure if he is completely set free from pornography? Well. Um, you lose the desire for it. The temptation can come and like knock, but you have the power. Mm -hmm. Tú tienes el poder, right? To say no. You have the power to say no. And, um, you know, the temptation lessens a lot. No hay mucha tentación. Uh, you know, no hay como esta impulsividad. Like there's not this impulsivity, this like, I can't control it. Um, kind of thing. And it's very easy for you to just not do it. There's, there's really no temptation. You know, it's sometimes the devil will come and knock, but you're able to say no, no, it's very easy for you. Right. Um, where can we find the YouTube video you talked about in your testimony with Lance? Oh, like, are you, Osvaldo, are you talking about like how we met? Because that one is, um, <clears throat> it's a video on my channel. It says, uh, we married in four and a half months, and here's why. Uh, so you guys can check that out. It's a beautiful story that God wrote because God wrote my love story, and I didn't deserve it. I really didn't deserve um, Lance as my husband. He's just such an amazing mm -hmm. man of God. I'm so grateful. And, you know, a lot of men, too, I, I will say, have commented, too, on my channel. I've been like, well, I would never, you know, settle for a woman who is not a virgin and see God even called one of the prophets Hosea to marry a prostitute to show his love for Israel because yeah. his people kept cheating on him with sin because when we sin we're cheating on God right and um you know my husband did not judge me because he is spiritually mature 
when you are judging a woman on her past after she has been made new by the blood of Christ, and that has been washed away, God has forgotten about it, God has washed her clean, he's separated her from her sin as the east is from the west, if you are looking at her with carnal eyes and not spiritual eyes, you're going to miss out on a great woman of God. Mm -hmm. My husband was wanting a woman that was a virgin. He was waiting for that. But uh, he, you know, and is it okay if I just, yeah. not, with no names or whatever? Absolutely, yeah. He dated a woman that was n a virgin, raised Christian. I was not a virgin, not raised Christian. And this woman uh, just was not the woman for him. And it really did a lot of damage, unfortunately, to him. And um, he, he, you know, at the end of the day, we were made for each other. I really believe that God had planned us marrying each other before the foundation of the world. And if he would judge me off of something so, you know, from my past, then number one, he's not acting from the father's love. And number two, you know... It, it, it's just immature. It's spiritually immature, right? Because you can't judge a woman of God for who she is and how God has made her now because of who she used to be, right? So um, anyways, let's get back. Lance speaks Spanish. No, he doesn't. I literally thought he was Latin when I met him. <laughs> and I don't, you know, so anyways, I, I, but he's actually half black, half white, right, babe? And he's got a bunch of other ethnicities as well. Yeah, I've got other ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, I should learn Spanish. It's just, it's a project. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, well, I'm going to teach him eventually. Eventually. I have to, I have to, thank you for that reminder because I have to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do. You do, yeah, babe. Right. Is there anything as hyper works? This is a question, y'all. Mm. Listen, I I had somebody comment and say, you know, you're preaching a wrong gospel because you're preaching repentance and repentance is a work. Jesus, the first thing he said when he came out of the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, the first thing he said when he started preaching and started his ministry was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. The people who crucified Jesus, they saw all these men speaking in tongues, you know, in, in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit was coming upon them. They're like, wow, look at this. And Peter, I think it was Peter that said, you know, you crucified Jesus. He's the one that gives this power. And they said, what, what shall we do? We just crucified him. Oh my gosh, the Messiah. He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and believe the gospel. Repentance is necessary. It's not a work. Mm -mm. If you really, because it's, it's, it's actually naturally comes from faith. So it's not a work. Because if you truly believe Jesus and you truly believe, if you truly believe Jesus and you truly believe what he said. And if you truly believe what he said, then you believe that if you do not repent, you will go to hell. Because that's what he said. And so with true faith in Christ, you naturally repent. You don't want to have that sin in your life because you love him. And you naturally walk away from that. Now, if you're doing works like, you know, doing a bunch of stuff, you know, to try to please God, it's like you can't please God. You're not, <laughs> you're not going to win your way to heaven by being a volunteer at your church and doing all of these things and, and, and helping that little old lady across the street and da da da. People say, Oh, I'm a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. Hold on. The Bible says no one is good. And anyone that says I have no sin is calling God a liar. That's what the Bible says. That's right. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one is good here. To, so, so to say I'm going to heaven, even though I don't believe in Jesus, but I'm a good person doesn't make sense. If you have a house and somebody comes and knocks in your house, and says, hey, I'm a good person. Can I live with you? You're going to be like, no. Why? Because you don't know them. You don't have a relationship with them. A lot of people are going to be knocking on God's door. Oh, can 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 we live here? He's like, you wanted nothing to do with me down there. Now you want to spend all eternity worshiping me? I don't know you. He says, I will tell many. I don't know you. Right? So, um, do you message? Okay. Back on Instagram, Lance. Lance, I don't think Lance goes on Instagram that much, um, but he does answer comments. He's really good with that. Uh, I'll check it every now and then. Yes. So I can I can go on DMs and look. 
Yes. Um, let's see. More questions. Does this apply for men as well? Yes, absolutely. Call me selfish. I'm marrying a virgin. Well, you know, if that's what you want. Mm, right here. I can, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, Roy. But the question was for Lance. He mentioned he watched a YouTube video on his testimony and he felt like a spirit left him. Where can we find that video? Yes. Yeah, so the video, if you go on YouTube, you just type in uh, Derek Prince Deliverance Prayer. And there'll probably be like some sort of uh, painting or some sort of picture that isn't real life of Jesus. And that's the one I listened to. Um, I There's other renditions where people have uploaded, um, but that's the one. Yes. And we're going to do deliverance here, but uh, may the Lord work through that as well in the same way he did for me. May he do it for you as well. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And Iwan, uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, I did see that you donated. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you. Um, and we take donations very, very seriously before the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we invest it into the kingdom. So we take that very, very seriously. And we really are grateful uh, when anyone does give, but we do not ask for donations. Um, we never will. We're not like that. And no. we never will be like that. There's too many pastors trying to do that and manipulate with scripture to get people to guiltily give. And that is not okay. No. Um, I was laughing at this one. Right. <laughs> Jackie, you, you should, yeah. Fernando, Oliveira, Vera. Jackie, do you have single girlfriends? Ha ha ha. Yes, I do. There are wonderful women of God out there, y'all. Okay, if you think, if you think that there is not a woman of God out there that's good, you're tripping. I'm going to just put it that way. You don't know because you just got to let God do it, okay? But seek the kingdom of God first and all these things shall be added for, to you, right? Um, A woman should be so hidden in God, right? I love this quote. But a woman should be so hidden in God that you have to seek God to find her. That's the kind of woman you want. That she's so hidden in God. She's like, man, I'm with the Lord. That you have to seek God to find her, right? And so, uh, yes, I do have a lot of single uh, girlfriends. And guess what? You know what? Actually, I don't have a lot of single girlfriends. I think I have like a few. Like maybe on one hand. I don't have that many friends, guys. Because uh, since I started my ministry, unfortunately, I've had a lot of uh, rejection from my friends and my family for, I don't know why, but it's just part of the territory. It comes like that. Um, when you follow Jesus wholeheartedly and you preach his word boldly, you're going to get backlash. Um, okay. So let's see more people. If you guys have questions, hit us, hit us with it. Let me go up here. How do you know you're, Okay, wait a minute. Some of these questions are silly, <laughs> but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to the ones that are really you guys are asking here. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. There's a lot. Yes, I'm Tyler. Yes, I'm Lance's wife. It's crazy. I know. Every day, I'm so blessed. I'm like, can I believe this guy's my wife? Or can I believe this guy's my husband? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking about husband wife. It's too much. Um, okay. Let me see. I don't want to miss any of your questions. I'm going to take, uh, three more questions and Lance, if you want to answer some of them too, if you see one, um, and then we're going to get into prayer. How to find a good wife. Yeah. How do you find a There's good wife? Yeah. Is that one? That one? Yeah. That's, yeah. It's a good question. Yeah. Well, you're going to laugh when I say this, but um, there is a difference between a good wife and a prudent wife. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've said this a lot, so she knows. Um, but I believe it's Proverbs 18. It talks about he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But then we see in Proverbs 19 that a prudent wife is from the Lord. So you first have to ask yourself, do you want a good wife? Or do you want a prudent wife? And it seems here you're saying a good wife, which means you put forth some effort. Now, with a prudent wife, we still put forth uh, the effort, but we wait upon God to present the person before us and then 
uh, we begin. So if you want to find a good wife, I mean, first and foremost, you need to ask yourself, am I prepared? Am I prepared to take on all the responsibilities of marriage financially? Can I can I provide for her spiritually? Can I can I lead her? And spiritual is number one. That is absolutely number one. God can take care of the rest. Um, but spiritually, are you in a place to be able to lead her to say, hey, we're going to go to the word today. Hey, we're going to go to church today. And if you find a good wife, she'll she'll want that. She'll desire that. Um, so that's absolutely a must. Uh, are you emotionally in a good place right now? Are you emotionally ready to take on the responsibility of being there for your wife? Are you mentally prepared? Are you strong and fortified within the mind? Are you able to take on the difficult times and uh, be more of, obviously we lean, we all lean upon Christ first and foremost, but as the husband, can your wife depend upon you and lean on you and cry on your shoulder? Are you there mentally or are you going to be more annoyed when she's uh, has certain emotions? Are you going to be just wanting to have your own space? Because if you want that, then you're not ready. Now, if all those things are kind of lining up, there's many more things we can discuss. Then how do you find a good wife? Where should you go? First and foremost, you go to the word. Because as you're cultivating yourself, your eyes are going to be more open to the right people. Uh, make sure you're going to the right environments. So I would say definitely, I mean, it's cliche, but uh, Bible study, young adult groups, um, even though there's a lot of surface level ones out there. So that's not even always the best necessarily. Uh, but doing that, um, also, you know, maybe going to the library to study. Um, places like that. And God can work in, see, here's the thing about God is he's infinite and he can work with any type of var variables and he knows all the possibilities and you need to not be concerned. Oh, you know, let's say you see someone attractive at uh, a local coffee shop. They walk out the door and you say, oh, why didn't I go up and say anything? If that person is truly for you, God is easily able to make up for your mistake or your uh, missing out on going to talk to that person. He can do that, no problem. He can have you both uh, cross paths at the grocery store and, and, or maybe uh, someplace else. He can work it all out, so just give it over to God. But I would say church, uh, young adult groups, library, uh, even coffee shops, uh, certain hobbies and uh, even sports, right? Uh, if you're into soccer and you're looking for someone who's maybe more athletic in, in that style, but obviously a believer, you got to figure that out then go to the places where that person may be. Uh, again, there are God stories, such as I just went on my YouTube to answer YouTube comments, and Jackie was the first video that popped up. And then from there, the rest is history after I, I reached out. So you never know how God's going to work. But I tell you, if you pray to God and you say, you know what? I don't need to go on all these dating apps. Mm, I, I did that. Yep. I don't need to try and work a trick, try and work something out in my own flesh. Yep. God, I want your best and I want a God story. That's what I said. And look what I got. I'm very blessed. And with a God story too, there's no way I could have conjured this up. And the fact that I saw her on YouTube and then we were living 40 minutes away from each other. I mean, that just doesn't happen. And his, his, uh, pastor was my professor. Yeah. Okay, the total God story, well, but I was his second girlfriend. He waited, guys. He waited <laughs> on God. Look at the fruit of when you wait on the Lord and you trust him. And he was 28 when he met me, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. 28. I know that during that time, guys are like, oh my gosh, God, are you bringing the wife? But he was, God, I trust you. And look what happens when you trust the Lord. Yes. So... Uh, Ewan, I wanted to just hit on your, um, I didn't see your comment before, but experience with deliverance, I might be possessed, deliverance first, then surrender to Christ or vice versa. I'm in repetitive sin, demonic oppression, attracted demons before intentionally, keep thinking I'm worthless and keep giving into temptation. We are going to do a deliverance prayer for anybody that wants deliverance, Ewan, and and just stay tuned. Um, I'm going to answer maybe one or two more questions and then we're going to get into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to answer one more question because I really, I one think this is important. Yeah. yeah, this is important. So, um, you know, believe you want, first of all, you are not worthless. Okay. 
I rebuke that in Jesus name. No one here is worthless because when you look at the cross, you see that you are to die for. You see that you're worth the cross. You see that you have a heavenly father who's willing to give you his only begotten son to save you from yourself. You know that God is chasing after you. No matter what you've done, God will forgive you. God loves you very much. Beyond what you can understand, right? So you are not worthless, okay? And it doesn't matter what people have said. Remember the devil uses people as well. Remember the devil uses your own mind against you to tell yourself all the time you're worthless. You are not worthless and don't say that because God sees your worth enough to give the most precious thing he had, which was his son, Jesus Christ. That is what you're worth for. You're worth the blood of Christ. So we're going to pray for you, Iwan. Okay, we're going to pray for everybody here. I'm going to answer one more question. There, There is somebody that said... Um, here, hold on. Um, man, don't let me lose it here. Hold on. Do you remember the keyword? You can just do command find, um, command F. I think it was up here somewhere. Okay. So it was somebody that said like, what if I don't have anybody that keeps me accountable? Yeah. Look for accountable. Um, no. There you go. Right here from the, okay. Sebastian Carter from the standpoint of accountability, what is your advice for when others can't keep you accountable and you are yourself and you yourself are failing being accountable? Okay. Um, I sought, I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to start, um, being, uh, mentored by a new mentor. Um, Who's this awesome. Saturday, who is amazing, amazing. So I'm so excited. She's so bold. She will tell you straight up what's up. <laughs> and uh, when we met her in the spirit, spiritual retreat, it was with a bunch of a bunch of us. Her name is Sylvia, and she is just a powerhouse. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. I was like, God told me, He's like, I need you to get a mentor, right? Because I haven't had one in a minute. And I was like, okay. And she came into my life. This woman tells you how it is. Okay. I need somebody to rebuke me. I need some, I need somebody. And she, I, I love her because she's going to tell me how it is. She's not, I'm not going to get away with anything. This is going to help my marriage. This is going to help my ministry. This is going to keep me accountable. I need somebody to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Okay. And that is a huge thing. When you want to be spiritual, spiritually mature, you need to be able to take rebuke. You need to be able to get somebody to, to keep you accountable. Right. And you need to be able, okay, you, a wise man receives rebuke. A wise man appreciates rebuke. That's mm -hmm. what the book of Proverbs tells you. And if you, if people are coming to you, hey, you hurt my feelings, you did this, and you're like, well, da-da-da, and you're trying to talk yourself out of it, that's pride. And yep. we can all fall into that, but we cannot, we are going to stay here in this level where God wants to take us right here because we cannot be accountable. You know, we cannot take responsibility for the ways that we messed up here, right? So um, seek a mentor who's going to tell you how it is and seek friends that are going to tell and not just like cuddle you and cuddle your flesh. Oh, yes, yes. And pastors that mm -hmm. every time you leave the church, you feel a good, a good message. Ooh, but never a convicting message. Danger. You're not getting challenged at the end of the day because you know what? And I say this and I'm, I'm going to keep saying this and maybe I'll make a t-shirt of it. But <laughs> I don't know, probably not. But there are pastors who are more concerned with keeping you in their seats, in their pews, and your money in their pockets, and your smile on your face, than to keeping your name in the book of life. It's a good word. Because we went to a church in Michigan, and the pastor literally said to us, we had like, we, 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 we heard some crazy stuff going on. And so we went down at, after the service and his teaching was a little off. So we were like, Hey, pastor, like, what, what does this mean? You know, we're bringing up the, the scripture and lovingly, like, you know, are you sure? Like, you know, what about this scripture here? And he's like, you know, it, it was talking about eternal life. And he's like, yeah. And, and my husband said, do you believe in hell? He's like, yeah, I believe in hell. Of course I believe in hell, but I would never preach it from the pulpit. 
Hello. I'm sorry. Hold on. Because Jesus preached about hell more than he preached about heaven. How? How in the world? What is going on? So if you don't have, if you have a pastor that makes you feel good every single Sunday, but you ain't getting convicted and you ain't getting challenged, mm -mm. Mm -mm. find another pastor. Okay. Um, I believe that God told me. So, so, so what you need to do, Sebastian, I, I think what more your question is, you're failing to be accountable yourself. You, you can't find anybody that can keep you accountable. Okay. I would say, um, seek a mentor, seek a mentor. That's going to, um, <clears throat> keep you accountable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go to church, find somebody that you trust and pray, right? Say, Lord, bring me, bring me somebody that's going to keep me accountable. Bring me a friend, bring me, bring me, you know, it doesn't have to be a mentor. It could be a friend. Bring me a brother in Christ, you know, um, go to church, go to a small group, go to a young adults group. Um, so that's what I would say to you, Sebastian. And I think, and I just want to applaud you right now, Sebastian. You know why? Because you are spiritually mature that you want accountability and you want yeah. somebody to tell you you're wrong and you want somebody to tell you, Hey, you could have done this better. And you want to tell you, you want somebody to tell you, Hey, you're in sin mm -hmm. because you know what? I'm not going to grow if somebody doesn't tell me what's up. Please tell me what's, tell me what I've done wrong. I will take responsibility for it. We need to get to that point. So we're going to pray. I would love to sit here and answer all your questions, guys, but we're going to pray. Okay. And we're going to go through deliverance. So this is the power of God, the power of the Holy spirit. God is deliver and he wants to deliver you from pornography. He wants to deliver you from lust. He wants to deliver you from perversion, all of that. So if you are dealing with this right now, you have to, first of all, be open to deliverance, believe in deliverance, believe that this is in his word. Okay. He said, those, these signs shall follow those who believe all those who believe, not just the disciples back then. He said, all those who believe in me, these signs shall follow them. They shall speak in new tongues, cast out demons, heal the sick. And so, um, it is not going to be me that's going to deliver you from demons. It is going to be Jesus Christ living in me who loves you and wants to set you free. And actually, there was a guy, guys, there was a guy that came and said to me, um, he said, hey, I was on your live. I did a live and I was like doing this, what I'm about to do, um, praying for deliverance for, for people. And he said, since you're live, I met with him uh, for a counseling session and um uh, he said, I was on your live and I, um, you prayed for deliverance and I haven't watched pornography in like months since you, that prayer of deliverance. So the Lord set him free guys. Um, mm -hmm. praise God, praise the Lord, praise God. So, uh, so let's pray and I'm going to lead you through it. So first of all, if you have any unforgiveness, okay, I just want you, this can stunt it. Okay. I want you to just. Close your eyes, okay, and meditate right now on just how good God has been to you, okay? I want you to think of all the ways God has been so gracious to you. Those moments where you're like, God, are you going to forgive me this time? God, are you going to forgive me for this? I don't know if you can. This is too much. I've done this too many times. I want you to remember all the ways, all the times that God has forgiven you. All the things God has forgiven you of. And that Jesus died on the cross for you to forgive you. And I say this to you right now. I say this to you right now. Let it go. Let it go. Let go of that pain and that hurt and give them to Jesus. Whoever that is coming into your mind, give them to Jesus right now. And understand that they're hurt because it's hurt people that hurt people. And it did not give them a right. But understand this, that Jesus, if you give them to Jesus, Jesus will deal with them. And Jesus will help them to come to a conclusion that they did wrong. You cannot convince anybody. But God says, love your enemies because when you were his enemy, he died for you. So 
I want you to just let go, let go of those people and just say out loud, I, with your heart, with your heart, I forgive them, Lord. I let go of them, Lord. I give them to you, Lord, right now. Okay. Now, we are going to get into a few spirits here. And what, what this is, this is the thing. And I always say this deliverance sometimes can take longer. Okay. For some people, because demons are stubborn, they don't want to leave. Okay. So you may, after this video, have to go back to this video that's going to be posted and just rewatch this part where I'm praying over you. Okay. And telling them to leave because they may not want to leave. So sometimes it takes longer. Um, so you may feel, and this is just a precursor, you may feel some tension in your body, tension in your head. You may feel like your stomach is feeling bad. You may feel like you want to throw up. You may feel lightheaded. You may feel like you want to burp. A lot of times they come out through air, right? The devil is the prince of the air. For some reason, they come out through air. But through throw up, they come out through throw up, they come out through air. So coughing, sneezing, uh, all that yawning. So that is what can happen. Okay. I just want to let you know. So, um, with all of your heart, don't just repeat after me these vain words. Okay. Don't, don't make it vain, but bring it from your heart. Okay. And I want you to repeat after me and I want you to say, close your, close your eyes. Don't even, don't even look at me right now. Okay. This is between you and Jesus and say, father, God, I am sorry for watching pornography. I am sorry for lusting. I am sorry for being perverted in my mind. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness now. And I pray that you will deliver me, Jesus. I believe you will deliver me because you are the great deliverer. Now keep repeating after me and say, I renounce and I break every contract and agreement I made with the spirit of lust with every spirit that came in through pornography, with the spirit of perversion, and the spirit of depression. I bind those spirits in the name of Jesus, and I command you all to leave now in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself. And I declare that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Okay. Now say, I don't want you anymore. Perfect. Now look at me. Because for some reason, demons just, they don't like to make eye contact because the Holy Spirit lives in the, the people doing deliverance. So just look at my eyes, okay? And just zone out on my eyes. And I want you, as I'm telling them to leave, tell them in your mind to leave, okay? So right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of lust, every spirit of lust, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I rend you powerless over this person and I command you in Jesus name, spirit of lust to come up and out, come up and out of their bodies, come out of their stomach right now, come out of their mind in Jesus name, come out of their body, come out of their throat, come out of their chest. Spirit of lust, we rend you powerless by the blood of Jesus. 
And we command you to leave in Jesus' name right now, up and out. Up and out, spirit of lust. We bind you and your kingdoms. Every spirit you let in, in Jesus' name, come up and out right now. Up and out, in Jesus' name, right now. Up and out. Okay, if you are feeling anything in your body changing, uh, please uh, put it in the chat, okay? And then resume. Every spirit... Every spirit of lust, we rend you powerless over this person. We cancel all of your assignments over this person in Jesus' name. You will no longer tempt them with pornography in Jesus' name. Come up and out right now. Up and out in Jesus' name right now. By the power of the blood of Jesus. We break off your power by the blood of Jesus right now. Spirit of lust, come out. Come out in Jesus' name right now. Come out. Come up and out right now. Come out of the mouth. Up and out of the mouth. Out of the throat. Out of the chest. Out of the stomach. In Jesus' name, come out. Up and out. That's right. All of you, come up and out. Up and out. All the way. Come all the way out. In Jesus' name, out of the mouth right now. Come out. Come out. I feel lighter now. Yep. When you feel lighter. There's a lot of testimonies coming in right Yes. Now. Yes. When you feel lighter, that's that's when they're coming out. Hallelujah. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, up and out, spirit of lust, right now, you will no longer torment these people. You will no longer torment them and keep them in bondage. In Jesus' name, I break off their chains of bondage by the blood and in the name of Jesus right now, come out, come out in Jesus name, perversion. in Jesus name, every spirit of perversion right now, mm -hmm. every spirit of perversion. Look at me. I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you in Jesus name to come up and out. Spirit of perversion. I break off your arms off this person. And I command you to come out of the eyes, come out of the ears, come out of their mind. In Jesus' name, spirit of perversion, I rend you powerless over this person right here watching. Come out of their stomach. Come out of their throat. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. Come out of the mouth. Spirit of provision, come out of the mouth right now. We cancel every plan of Satan over this person in Jesus' name. We declare that the pure in heart shall see God and they are pure in heart. Come up and out now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Every spirit of perversion, come up and out right now. You have no power compared to the blood of Jesus, spirit of perversion, come out. Up and out. Good, good. A lot of people are saying, good. Hallelujah, God is good. Every spirit of lust and perversion right now, if you're still hanging on, come up and out right now from these people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you will no longer plague them. I break off your power right now and I prophesy over them in Jesus' mighty name. They will watch porn no more after this day in Jesus' name. They will have no desire for it in Jesus' name. Spirit of perversion and lust, come out of that person. Come out in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out in Jesus' name. Honey, you tell me the spirit next when it's time. All right, I will. Every spirit of lust and perversion, I uproot the lies that you planted in this person's mind in Jesus' name that they're homosexual. They are not homosexual. I declare and prophesy that they are delivered from homosexuality in the name of Jesus right now. Spirit of perversion. 
be silent and come up and out. Up and out. Anger and insanity. Anger and insanity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're dealing with anger, okay. If you're dealing with anger, I want you to repeat after me, okay? Say, um, say, spirit of anger, I don't want you anymore. And I break off your power off of me in the name of Jesus. Spirit of anger, I renounce and I break every legal contract and agreement that I made with you in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Leave me now. In Jesus' name. Okay, now I'm going to pray for you, okay? So just look at me. Look at me and tell that spirit of anger to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay? Spirit of anger in the name of Jesus, I rend you powerless over this person in Jesus' name. And I command you to come up and out of this person now. I break off your chains off of this person by the blood of Jesus. And I command you to come out of this person right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of that person, anger. And stop causing division within their home. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out, up and out, out of their stomach. Out of their throat. Out of their chest. Out of their back. Out of their neck. Come up and out right now, spirit of anger. And I command you, spirit of anger, to come out with all the pain that you're causing them in their back and in their neck and in their shoulders. And I command the pain to leave now. The, all pain in the back, leave in Jesus' name. All the pain in the in the um in the neck and in the shoulders, come out, come out in Jesus' name. Go right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke all pain. Right now, in Jesus' name, every spirit of anger <clears throat> come up and out of this person, out of the mouth right now, out of the mouth, come out, come out in Jesus' name. Anger and rage. rage, come out. Spirit of rage that came in through anger, I bind you in the name of Jesus by the Lord Jesus Christ and his power and the blood shed. On the cross of Calvary, come up and out right now of this person. Come out, rage. Come out, rage in Jesus' name. Come out, rage. Up and out. Come up and out right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Up and out. Come out of the mouth right now. Stop being stubborn and come out. Every spirit that we've named, come out. Every unclean spirit, come out in Jesus' name right now. Up and out. Mm -hmm. Up and out in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You will no longer plague this person with all of these, all of these uh, thoughts to kill, to, to hurt, to uh, push, to shove. Right now, come out, spirit of rage in Jesus' name. Insanity. Insanity. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, okay. I'm feeling... Yeah. If you if you have if you have um a spirit of if you feel like insane sometimes or if you feel like you don't think straight or you have like confusion or whatever you feel like anything if you may feel like you might have the spirit of insanity or not like insane or whatever but you have like moments right just um repeat after me okay. Uh, if, if you don't, if you don't yawn or burp, can it still work? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, absolutely. Cause not everybody yawns or burps or, or coughs. Okay. Sometimes the spirits just leave and you'll feel lightness. That is, that is the key word. You'll feel like something came off. You'll feel light. Okay. <clears throat> you will get tired after this too, because this is really exhausting, um, <clears throat> to do this. So, 
So repeat after me if you feel like you may have the spirit of anxiety or not anxiety mm-hmm. of insanity. Say, um, say, um, I renounce and break every contract and agreement that I or my ancestors made with the spirit of insanity. Yes, they can leave through crying. In the name of Jesus, spirit of insanity, leave me right now in Jesus' name. I command you by the blood of Jesus, I don't want you anymore. Okay, now I'm going to pray for you. So just look at me. Just look at me and tell them to leave from your mind. Tell the spirit of insanity to leave. Tell every spirit that you want, that we've named, to leave. Okay? Spirit of insanity, in the name of Jesus, I bind you and I command you to stop tormenting them at night. Stop tormenting them in their mind about who they are. And I command you in Jesus' name to come up and out insanity right now. Insanity in Jesus' name. Up and out of this person's mind. Spirit of insanity that has caused schizophrenia, that has caused um, mania, paranoia. I command you in Jesus' name to come out of that person in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Up and out. Up and out of this person right now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Up and out. I render you powerless. I cancel every assignment of yours from the kingdom of darkness over this person and their mind. In Jesus' name, come out. And I close every door that they've opened for you. In Jesus' name, come out right now. Spirit of insanity, leave. Yes, they can leave with no physical effects. Yes. I think there's vanity. So, vanity. Yeah. Okay. Spirit of vanity. It's not. It's not hard to get the spirit of vanity for any of us, right? Um. I can't stop yawning. That is. The Lord. That is deliverance, right there. That is deliverance. Um. Okay. Um. So if you vanity, what is vanity? Yawning like crazy. Good. Maybe just stay with insanity if you're a little bit longer. Okay, a little bit longer. Okay, every spirit of insanity in the name of Jesus, come out of this person. Come out of this person in Jesus' name, up and out right now, out of the stomach, and come out with every spirit that you brought in. Spirit of insanity, come out with every spirit that you brought in in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus right now, up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out right now. Spirit of insanity. Come out of the mind right now. Come out of their eyes. Mm -hmm. Come out of their eyes. Come out of their ears. Come out. Come out. Up and out. In Jesus' name. Good. Um, Good. Before you do vanity, I feel, I don't know, there's some, like, childhood wounds from... Childhood wounds? From some people, yeah, but I don't... Okay. So if you've had uh, childhood trauma. wounds and trauma, maybe somebody has, um, maybe somebody... Ha- oh, if you feel sleepy, listen, that could also be they don't want you to get deliverance. They're trying to get you to fall asleep. A lot of times, when you're trying to get deliverance, a spirit of slumber will come upon you. Uh, speak. Let's speak out against slothfulness, right? Now. Sloth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my ears keep popping. Yes. Yes. So keep telling those spirits to leave, even if I'm talking and I'm talking about something else. Keep telling them leave in Jesus' name. Leave, and they'll start coming out. Okay. You can do self deliverance. Um, okay. If you are dealing with laziness, mm-hmm. laziness. Okay. I want you to repeat after me. Repeat and mean it with your whole heart. Don't just repeat. Mean it. Say, spirit of laziness, I divorce you right now. And I break every contract and agreement that I made with you. In Jesus' name, I command you to leave me now. 
by the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, I close every door I have opened to you. In Jesus' name. Okay? Now look at me and tell them to leave. Tell that spirit of laziness to leave. Sloth. Okay? Spirit of laziness laziness or sloth in the name of Jesus, I rend you powerless over this person. I break off your power off of this person in Jesus' name. And I declare and prophesy, you will not keep them in bed all day long Mm -hmm. doing nothing. You will not keep them from the tasks that they need to do in Jesus' name. You will not keep them from the work of ministry that they have in their life to do in Jesus' name. Spirit of sloth and laziness, I command you to come up and out of this person. Come up and out, out of the belly, out of the throat, out of the mind, out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Stop making them feel tired when they're not even tired. Up and out now in Jesus' name, spirit of sloth. I rend you powerless over this person. Come up, up and out, up and out, up and Uh, out. Someone said they're scared. There's no need to be scared. No need to be scared. Your nose is running. It's okay. Get some tissues. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's just they're coming out. They're coming out. Sometimes they come out through um, snot. Sometimes they come out through coughing, through throw up. So um, don't be afraid. It's okay. it's okay. Um, yep, sneeze, yawn, burp. That's all normal. Okay. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. It's a good thing. They're coming out. Spirit of laziness in Jesus' name, come up and out. Spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus, come up and out of this person right now in Jesus' name. Come out, spirit of laziness, right now. You will no longer plague them. You will no longer have any power over them. Come out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out, spirit of laziness. Out in the name of Jesus. Out, up and out. Okay, good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I know we were talking before that because some people felt sleepy, but trauma. Trauma. Okay. So, childhood. Okay, guys, so if you have if you have a spirit of trauma or if you have had trauma from your um, childhood, if you've been molested as a child, if you've been neglected by your parents, if you've been abandoned, you have some problems from your childhood, okay? Spirits can come in through trauma, unfortunately, okay? So um, so I want you to just look at me, okay? And I'm just going to command them to come out, okay? Every spirit that came in through trauma, through childhood, through abuse, through sexual molestation, through physical abuse, verbal abuse, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come out. Every spirit that came in through trauma from this person, that causes them to uh, be angry with God, that causes them to be angry with themselves and with others, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of trauma, spirit, every spirit that came in through trauma, come out of this person right now. Come out of their bellies. Come out of their mind. Come out of their body. Come out of wherever you're hiding in Jesus' name. Up and out right now. Up and out right now. Spirit that came in through trauma, through child abuse, come out in Jesus' name. Every orphan spirit come out in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Every spirit of the orphan that feels like they don't have a place in this world and they don't belong to God, they are loved by God. I cancel your lies over them in Jesus' name. They are loved by God. I bind you, spirit of the orphan. I command you to come out. Come out, spirit of orphan. Up and out. Yep. If you're feeling tired, they're trying to come against this. Many people are commenting that they feel tired all of a sudden because they don't want you to. Stay awake. Stay awake. Get some water. Splash some water in your face. Come back. Okay. 
Every spirit of the orphan come up and out in Jesus' name, up and out. Every spirit that came in through childhood trauma in Jesus' name, come out by the blood of Jesus. Come out. Every spirit that we've named here, every unclean spirit come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Up and out right now. Spirit of insanity, spirit of perversion, spirit of lust, spirit that came in through pornography, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of this person right now. Every spirit that's hiding, come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Up and out. Up and out. Yeah, you feel angry? There's a spirit of anger. Every spirit of anger violence. and violence in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this person in Jesus' name. Up and out, right? Come out. Come out. Out. Out of the stomach. Out of the mouth. Out. Out in Jesus' name. Out. Out. Right now. Out. Out of that person. Out. Mm -hmm. Out in Jesus' name right now. Out in Jesus' name. You have to bow before the blood of Jesus. You have to obey the blood of Jesus. Come out by the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name right now. Come out. Come out. If you're crying a little bit, it's because they're coming, they don't, they don't want to come out. It's okay, but they're coming out. They're coming out. It's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Every spirit. If you're gagging, yep, that's part of it. Every spirit that came in through trauma, every orphan spirit, every spirit of perversion, every spirit of anger, every spirit of insanity, every spirit of lust, come up and out of that person now and do not return to them. Do not return to them in Jesus' name. Every spirit of doubt in the name of Jesus, come up and out. Every spirit of doubt come up and out of that person in Jesus' mighty name right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Up and out. Spirit of Leviathan, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of pride, I bind you in Jesus' name. And I declare the word of God that God exalts the humble, but he abases the prideful. Mm -hmm. Up and out. Leviathan, up and out now by the blood of Jesus. Up and out, spirit of pride. In Jesus' name. Could you just start doing speed round a little bit? Anxiety and fear. Okay. Every, okay. If you have dealt with the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. okay. If you've dealt with the spirit of anxiety, we're going to speak it out right now. We're going to, okay. Speak and say this. Say, repeat after me and mean it, okay. Every spirit of fear and anxiety, I divorce you right now in Jesus' name. I do not want you. And I break every contract and legal agreement that I made with the spirit of fear and anxiety in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Say, I don't want you anymore. Leave me. Okay, good. Now I'm going to pray over you. Every spirit of fear, God has said in his word, it is written. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Spirit of fear, come up and out of this person. Spirit of anxiety, come up and out of this person. Spirit of anxiety that causes panic attacks in the name of Jesus, come up and out of this person right now. Up and out, right now, up and out, out of the body, out of the mouth, come out, come out fear, come out anxiety, come out of their stomach, come out of their mind, come out in Jesus' name, up and out. I think a big one, Jezebel. Jezebel is a huge yeah. one. Jezebel is a huge, huge one. Guys, continue. If I if I move on to a different spirit, keep continuing. You, you name it in your mind or out loud. Spirit of, you say it. Spirit of fear, leave me in Jesus' name. Spirit of uh, perversion, leave me in Jesus' name. Just start speaking it, okay? Every spirit, every spirit of, so, okay, now we're going to, we're going to have to, you're going to have to repeat after me, the Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is in a lot of women. 
and some men too. A lot of men too, actually. So repeat after me and say, Lord, I repent for trying to manipulate, control, and silence your voice, ignore your voice, witchcraft. Okay, if you've done any new age stuff, that is witchcraft. You must repent of it. I've been there. You must repent of it, okay? So say, Spirit of Jezebel, I renounce and I break off your power from me. I break every legal agreement and contract I made with the spirit of Jezebel. Spirit of Jezebel, keep repeating after me, spirit of Jezebel, I command you to leave me now in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. Okay, now just look at me and tell that spirit in your mind to leave. Every spirit of Jezebel, right now, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you by the blood of Jesus, Jezebel, come up and out of this person now. I break off your power. I take you down from your throne. I take off all of your jewelry and I command you in Jesus' name to come up and out of this person now. Jezebel, today you're leaving. Come out of this person. Go and wander in dry places right now, and you will not return. Come out. Come out, Jezebel. Come out of every part of their body. Come out and stop seducing them. Come up and out. Come up and out, Jezebel. Up and out right now. Up and out. Up and out, Jezebel. Come out. Come out of the throat. Every spirit that is causing them to dabble into witchcraft, spirit of Jezebel, come out in Jesus' name. Come out witchcraft in Jesus' name right now. Up and out witchcraft, up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out, Jezebel. Okay. Yes. If you're feeling, oh, spirit of infirmity. Okay. We're going to do this last one, okay? We're going to do spirit of infirmity. Listen, if you feel like you still need deliverance, if you feel like you're still throwing up or you're still, say it in, you can do this in your room with the Holy Spirit. Just say, spirit of whatever it is, come out of me in Jesus' name. Spirit of, you know, and you can come back to this video once it's posted, okay? But say, spirit of whatever, come out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. I renounce you. And you just keep fighting with that, and it will come out, okay? So you can do that deliverance, okay? Um, so we're going to pray. We're going to pray over this. What was it, baby? I forgot. Infirmity. Infirmity. Okay. So if you if you if you have any sickness in you, we're gonna pray. If you have any pain in your body, listen up. If you have any pain in your body, if you have any sickness, okay, let's pray for you right now because God can heal you. God can heal you. Okay. So we're gonna pray against that spirit of infirmity. We're gonna we're gonna break off every contract and agreement we made and legal agreement because you may have said I am sick I have this I don't come in agreement with that stuff there's power of life and death in the tongue don't do it okay so you say um so repeat after me okay and then we're gonna pray for healing over you for whatever pain wherever you have it so say um spirit of infirmity I break off the power I've given you through my words and I break every spoken curse over me in Jesus' name. And I break every contract and agreement I have made with you. Spirit of infirmity, leave me now in Jesus' name. 
by the blood of Jesus. Okay, that's good. Now, um, look at me, okay? You're going to tell that spirit to leave, okay? Um, and if you're feeling anything, take a second, write it in the chat, okay? And then come back. Um, spirit of infirmity. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave up and out, up and out infirmity. Stop causing them to be fearing death. Spirit of infirmity, come up and out. By his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. By his stripes, we are healed. Come up and out infirmity right now. Come out of their back. Come out of where you're causing them pain. Come out of their stomach. Come out of their throat. Come out of every part, their brain, everything. Come out from where there's tumors. Come out in Jesus' name. Infirmity, come up and out right now. Come out of the feet. Come out of the legs. Come out of the arms. Come out of the hands right now. Every spirit of infirmity that's ca causing carpal tunnel, come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, up and out. Up and out, spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name. And I command you to come out right now. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. If it's angry through your face and you have to tell it to come out, Yep, the headache's gone. Hallelujah. Look. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Every spirit of infirmity come out of that person in Jesus' name. Out of that person right now. Out of that person in Jesus' name. Out from that body part that you're causing pain right now in Jesus' name. Up and out right now. Up and out in Jesus' name. Okay? Now, um, Wherever you have, and continue to tell it to come out. If you feel like it's you're still manifesting, you have like it's coming out. Okay, continue. For the people that feel like you you feel a little lighter. Okay, I want you to put um, mm -hmm. your hand over where it, wherever you are that's feeling pain. Whether it's your back, whether it's your leg, whether it's your foot, what, whether it's your head. Put your your hand there. Okay, and I'm going to pray over you. In the name of Jesus. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that your hand be their hand right now. Father God, that you will heal this person. Heal this person, Lord God, of all pain in Jesus' name. All pain in that body part in Jesus' name, come out. Leave that body right now. Leave that. Come out. I rebuke all pain in that area that they're touching in Jesus' name. Come out, pain. Leave pain in Jesus' name. I rebuke all pain in Jesus' name. I command all pain to leave. All pain go. All pain go right now in Jesus' name. All pain go in Jesus' name. Up and out. Every spirit that's causing pain, come out right now. And all pain go. All pain go from the back. Come out of the back. Come out of the back right now. Come out of the lower back in Jesus' name. Come out of the stomach right now in Jesus' name. That's causing digestive system problems. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of the brain. Come out of the brain. Come out of the head causing migraines in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I had crazy neck tightness and pain as you started deliverance. And I have finally had relief after I started to rebuke all spirits. Hallelujah. You Praise see, this is what's needed. This is the children's bread. This is what's needed in church, guys. Mm -hmm. Wow, I feel much better and more at peace. There's all these people. Look at all these people. I cracked my neck. I cracked my neck, Erlen. You have, do you have pain there or did you, did you get relief? Okay. Yawning is normal. Yes, George, yawning is normal. If you guys still have spirits, tell them to leave. Don't, don't stop the deliverance process. Don't stop. You're going to feel much better after God is delivering you right now. This is, there's no coincidence. Okay. There's no way that I could be saying these words and then 
all this stuff is happening here. Things are coming out of you. This is deliverance, right? God is doing, it's a miracle. It's beautiful. My stomach is feeling much better and I deal with pancreatitis. Well, I rebuke that pancreatitis, Maribel, in Jesus' name. You do not have pancreatitis in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You do not have that in Jesus' name. You are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Someone Lord. Someone said this is, they got relief. It's their first time. Mm -hmm. They've been searching for something like this. Yes. They feel light. Hallelujah. I got goosebumps while you're praying. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit. He's touching you. It has nothing to do with me. That's all Jesus. Okay. Praise God. Praise the Lord, guys. Okay. So I've been on here for two hours and 15 minutes and my husband and I are hungry and um, yeah, so we need to get going, but uh, I love you guys so much. I really do. This is, this is what I, why I do what I do because I love you guys. I really, I want you guys to be set free and it was my dream. It was my dream and God knew it was my dream to share the love of God with as many people as I could. And um, I never thought he would actually do it um, through this ministry, but he did. And um, I am, I'm so grateful and humbled by it. And, um, you know, anybody that's going to lead, anybody that wants to be a pastor here or wants to be a leader, you got to love people. You got to love people. You got to really have a heart for the lost. So, um, but praise the Lord because it's only him because... I used to hate people. I used to say, I hate people. Okay. It's only God that can give you the love for people that you need to have. So I love you guys so much. And, uh, I will, uh, have this posted. Take some time. I'll have this posted and continue the deliverance, um, or watch the video and continue to, you know, look while the spirits are coming out. So, um, deliverance is the children's bread. It's for you. And, um, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys. And thank you guys so Love much you. for uh, all the donations. Pastel, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. God bless you for it. Thank you, Payal. Payal's my girl. I love Payal. Um, and Lorraine, thank you so much, Lorraine, for giving. It was so sweet of you. She's my girl as well. I do some. Um, so lastly, I'm just going to say um, I'm getting a business. I'm building a business where I'm going to be able to do one-on-one -on -one Christian life coaching. Um, and, uh, I will be putting that up soon. Uh, but I'm really excited because that's like my dream and that's like what I love, um, is what I've been doing for a long time. So I am excited to, um, get on here and let you guys know when that's up, when my website is up and you can, uh, schedule with me. So, um, I hope you guys have a beautiful night and that you be blessed in Jesus name. All right. Bye guys. Bye, guys.